Hi, I'm uh, Noah Fleming, and I'm going to be talking about on the power and limitations of branch and cut. And this is joint work with Mika Goose, Russell and Pagliazzo, Tony Patassi, Robert Robert, Liang Tan, and Avi Victorson. And so basically this talk is about the proof complexity of integer programming. So I'm going to start with proof complexity, a brief overview of it, um, and then how you can use proof complexity for algorithm analysis. And then in particular, the proof complexity of integer programming. And here I'll talk about how modern algorithms for integer programming, branch and cut algorithms, can be formalized as static planes. Um, then I'll talk about how a, another proof system for integer programming, cutting planes, relates to static planes. And here I'll show a partial simulation of static planes by cutting planes. Next, I'll use that partial simulation in order to give short cutting planes proofs of any system of linear equations over a finite field. And then finally, we'll switch gears and talk about a new method for proving lower bounds on the depth of cutting planes proofs, which works for a broad semantic generalization of cutting planes. OK, um, yeah, so proof complexity is the study of the question of whether there is a propositional proof system which has short proofs of every unsatisfiable CNF formula. OK, so a proof system, you should just think of it as a finite set of deduction rules that allow you to make logical inferences um, that are sound, complete, and polynomial time verifiable. And if you squint, this is basically just the definition of an NP verifier. And by proofs, we'll mean like certificates that the CNF formula is unsatisfiable. And the set of all unsatisfiable CNF formulas is the co-NP complete language unsat. So proof complexity is just the question of whether there is an NP verifier for a co-NP complete language unsat. And this was the observation made by Cook and Rekau, who introduced it. Um, obviously, if uh, the answer is no, then NP is different from co-NP, and therefore P is different from NP. So proof complexity tries to build towards a resolution of um, NP versus co-NP by proving lower bounds on successively stronger proof systems. And this is known as Cook's program. So this is kind of um, our, our current state of the art. Here, here's a bunch of popular proof systems. The ones above the yellow line, we have yet to prove polynomial lower bounds, super polynomial lower bounds on. And the ones below, we have exponential lower bounds. So in this talk, we're gonna be interested in these two proof systems, stabbing planes and cutting planes. Um, so another motivation for proof complexity is algorithm analysis. Uh, so while lower bounds on every proof system would imply NP is different from co-NP, uh, the size of proofs in specific proof systems is connected to the analysis of algorithms for NP problems. Okay, so the high level idea is if you have a class of algorithms, um, you could formalize the techniques used in them as, as like logical inferences in some proof system. This allows us to hide the practical details of the algorithm um, and then lower bounds on uh, the length of proofs in this proof system imply lower bounds on the runtime of the algorithm. Um, so this has been done uh, uh, quite a lot. Um, so algorithms for SAT have been formalized by the resolution proof system. Uh, broad classes of linear and semi-definite programs uh, can be viewed as the like formal duals to Shirley Adams and Summa Squares proofs. And there's also been um, some work on formalizing algorithms for integer programming uh, as proof systems. So here, the classical Vitalik Mori cutting planes method can be formalized as the cutting planes proof system. And the modern branch and cut method can be formalized as the static planes proof system. OK, so yeah, so in this talk, we're going to be interested in these proof systems for integer programming. So what is integer programming? Uh, so you're given a polytope defined by an, a system of integer linear inequalities, say x is greater than equal to b. Um, and you're asked to find an integer point which lies in the polytope. Now, this is an NP complete problem. And so you can always reduce the 
satisfiability of, uh, of a CNF formula to integer programming and vice versa. So we can consider proof systems for integer programming as, as proof system, as like proposition proof systems. Um, so the classical method for solving integer programming uh, is the Vital Gamori cutting points method. And basically what it does is it takes a polytope and it iteratively refines it um, until the resulting polytope can be, a good solution can be found um, by just running an LP solver. Okay. And in the 80s, Kukulard and Turan formalized the um, cutting planes method as a proof system known as cutting planes. This is going to be one of the two main proof systems I talk about here. Uh, so because we're talking about proof complexity, we're interested in the refutational tasks. That is, given a polytope with no integer points in it, uh, prove this fact. So cutting planes. Uh, so here is a, a, a polytope with no integer solutions. Uh, and cutting planes uh, refutes a polytope by deriving the empty polytope or equivalently the trivially false inequality, zero greater than the one from the initial polytope by using the following two rules. Uh, so the first rule is conic combinations. So we're allowed to take two inequalities uh, that we've previously derived or belong to the initial polytope and derive any non-negative linear combination of them uh, so here we've taken the two red lines and we've derived the uh, blue half space. Um, so uh, down here in the example, I've added together these two inequalities. And you can observe that this preserves all of the points in the polytopes. This doesn't rule out any point at all. So we need some other rule which allows us to make progress. And that's where the division rule comes in. So if we have an inequality, uh, such that all of the coefficients of the variables are divisible by some value alpha, then we can divide through by alpha and round up the right-hand side. And this rounding up uh, corresponds to essentially taking your half space and shifting it inward to the nearest integer point. Okay, so here I've divided through by two and rounded up the right-hand side. And we can complete the proof by adding together uh, this inequality with um, uh, the first inequality derived zero grade to one. And this division rule removes some non-integer points, uh, but preserves all integer points. So it makes progress basically. Okay, and the size of the proof is just the number of derivations in it. And the depth of the proof, which is another measure we're gonna be interested in, is the longest root to leaf path. And just like how in the circuit complexity world, uh, depth captures like a notion of parallelizability, um, the depth of proofs in proof complexity captures uh, an analogous notion of parallelizability and therefore uh, parallelizability of um, algorithms which are captured by these proofs. Okay, so in proof complexity, uh, cutting planes is quite a powerful and very well studied proof system. So there's short proofs of the pigeonhole principle in cutting planes. This is a standard um, a hard family of formulas uh, for many of the, of the proof systems we study. Um, and exponential lower bounds uh, were proved on cutting planes in the 90s by Pavel Putlock. Okay, so although cutting planes is very well studied in proof complexity, in modern integer programming, it's not really used on its own. Modern integer programming algorithms combine cutting planes with a branch and bound procedure, um, resulting in a class of algorithms known as branch and cut. Um, yeah, so these are not captured by cutting planes. Um, so what is branch and cut? Um, so again, uh, basically what we're gonna do is, uh, branch and cut is gonna be a way to like take a polytope and refine it such that running an, just an LP solver on it will give you a good solution to the integer programming problem. And the way we're going to refine it is in the, by recursively repeating the following two steps. You take a polytope, you break the polytope up into sub polytopes such that 
every integer point is contained in one of the polytopes. In practice, all of the branching is done by picking an arbitrary integer linear quality, ax is greater equal to b, and branching on whether it's true, that is ax greater equal to b, or false, ax is less than or equal to b minus one over the integers. So uh, in practice, uh, this will be done for some restricted class of half spaces like uh, branching on the value of a single variable or branching on the Hamming weight of a subset of coordinates or something like that. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so this breaks it up into two polytopes like that. And the second step is to cut, is to refine each of these polytopes with new cutting planes deductions. And then we recurse on each of the polytopes. Okay. So in 2018, um, Beam et al. introduced the stabbing planes proof system uh, in order to for formalize. Um, branch and cut algorithms as a proof system. Uh, so a stabbing place proof, again, wants to prove the unsatisfiability of, uh, of a polytope. Um, so uh, yeah. Um, and you can think of their proofs, the proof, the stabbing planes proofs are incredibly simple. They're just decision trees querying integer linear inequalities. Um, so you begin with your initial polytope, you pick an arbitrary integer linear inequality, and you branch on whether it's true, ax is greater equal to b, or it's false, ax is less than or equal to b minus one. Okay, so here's the action on the polytope there. Um, and let's go down the left-hand side. Now we have this polytope. Pick another arbitrary integer linear inequality, query it. Now we get the empty polytope at both leaves. So we recurse, go to the right-hand side, pick an arbitrary query, branch on it, get the empty polytope. And now this is a refutation. And why is that? Um, or a proof that there's no integer points in, in the polytope. And this is because each of the queries, each of these ax greater equal to b, were um, integer valued. And so any integer point would satisfy one of them, would satisfy either ax is greater than b or ax is less than or equal to b minus one. And that would mean that there would be some path through this proof um, where you know, every integer point would, sat, would, would uh, you know, survive some path down this proof, get to a leaf, and therefore we couldn't have derived the empty polytope at that leaf. Okay, and uh, the size of the proof is just the number of nodes in it. And very recently, this was shown to be polynomially related to the number of bits that you need to write down this proof. This was proved by deduction to I. Okay, um, so I said that uh, stabbing planes formalized branching cut algorithms, but branching cut algorithms also allow for cutting planes deductions. Well, this turns out to be superfluous because stabbing planes can actually simulate cutting planes. Um, and the first result of our paper is a uh, characterization of cutting planes as a subsystem of stabbing planes that we call path-like stabbing planes. Okay, so what is path-like stabbing planes? Well, a path-like stabbing planes query is just a stabbing planes query where one of the two sides of the query is empty. So for example, this is not a path-like stabbing planes query, but this is a path-like query, okay? And we call it path-like because the proof just looks like one long path. Um, yeah, and so it's easy to see that uh, path-like stabbing planes simulates cutting planes. Um, how do you show this? Well, we're gonna show that each of the cutting planes rules can be simulated in stabbing planes or in path-like stabbing planes. So first the conic combination rule. Uh, so this doesn't remove any points from the polytope. And so we can just, we can just ignore it. The division rule, um, this requires a little bit more work because this actually does remove points from the polytope. So if we, we have this inequality here uh, and we round it to get this guy, then um, observe that, so the yellow guy is valid for the polytope. So that means that every point in the polytope satisfies the yellow guy. And this means that if you take ax is less than or equal to the ceiling of b over alpha minus one. And this is the empty polytope. 
right? So now we can just take AX is less than or equal to the ceiling of B over alpha minus one, and AX is greater than or equal to the ceiling of B over alpha as a path like query. And this is at least as strong as the, as the well, it's exactly as strong as the, as the cutting points uh, deduction. Uh, and that proves that, that proves this claim. Okay, um, so now we've seen that uh, stabbing planes can simulate cutting planes. And the natural question is, um, is stabbing planes strictly stronger? Um, so the obvious candidate formula to prove this separation is the Seiten formulas. So on one hand, um, we showed that there are quasi-polynomial size stabbing planes proofs um, in the, uh, uh, of the Seiten formulas in the work with uh, Beam et al. in 2018. Um, and on the other hand, uh, they're conjectured to be hard for cutting planes. And this is a conjecture dating back to the 80s when uh, Kukulad and Tron introduced cutting planes. So in a really surprising result at the previous CCC, um, Dedush and Tuari showed that there are actually quasi-polynomial size cutting planes proofs of Seiten. And the way they did this was they showed that you could translate the stabbing planes proofs of Seiten into cutting planes. And this begs a very natural question. Can every stabbing planes proof be translated into cutting planes? Okay, so we give a, probably the, the biggest result in this paper is a partial resolution of this question. We show that any stabbing plane star proof can be quasi polynomially translated into cutting planes. So a stabbing plane star proof is just a stabbing planes proof where all of the coefficients um, have quasi polynomial magnitude. So if your stabbing planes proof has quasi polynomial size coefficients, then it implies a cutting planes proof, which is at most quasi polynomially bigger. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, the first, it's two steps. The first step is we show that um, we can actually uh, characterize cutting planes by a proof system which seems to be a priori a little bit stronger than path-like stabbing planes, uh, which we call face-like stabbing planes. Okay, so remember that path-like stabbing planes require that one side of the query is empty. Face-like stabbing planes relaxes this a little bit and says, okay, both sides of the query are allowed to be non-empty, but one side of the query has to be a face. That is, um, let's suppose it's AX less than or equal to B minus one. Uh, so that, that is AX less than or equal to B minus one may not be empty, but AX strictly less than B minus one is empty. So uh, said differently, um, AX is equal to B minus one uh, is a face of the polytope. So you can see this here in the blue line on the leftmost query. Yeah, so AX is equal to B minus one is a face of the polytope. So this is face like stabbing planes. Um, yeah, so we show that cutting planes is equal to path like stabbing planes is equal to face like stabbing planes. And this last equality crucially uses a lemma from the 80s by Shriver, uh, which was also a key ingredient in deducing twice proof uh, that cutting planes can prove the second formulas. And then the second step is to show that any stabbing planes proof. Uh, with quasi polynomially bounded coefficients can be made face like with a quasi polynomial blow up in the size of the proof. And here we, we crucially use that the, co the size of the coefficients are only quasi polynomially large because basically the size of the coefficients is closely related to how much space there is between. Uh, a stabbing planes query, right? So if you have a query that's like this, then if the coefficients are really big, then the space between them can be really small. But if the coefficients are really small, then the space is not very big. Um, yeah, so it's a very high level intuition. Um, and we get some nice corollaries from this. Um, so the first is the first exponential lower bounds on stabbing plane star proofs. This holds basically for anything that we've proved lower bounds on in cutting planes such as the clique color formulas, random CNF formulas, and lifted formulas, lifted with the index gadget. 
Um, we also can prove that stabbing plane star cannot be automated, meaning we can't, there's no algorithm that can efficiently find stabbing plane star proofs unless P is equal to NP. And this follows by inspecting um, the recent result showing that cutting planes is not automatable. And finally, um, we are able to show that cutting planes has quasi polynomial size proofs of any unsatisfiable system of linear equations over a finite field. And this result takes a little bit more work. Um, but I think it's quite striking because there's this result by Filmus, Prubesh, and Loria from 2016, which shows that um, there are systems of linear equations, this time not over any finite field, um, which require exponential size cutting planes proofs. So what this says is that cutting planes can efficiently refute or prove um, systems of linear equations over finite fields, but it can't reason about linear equations, at least always, over its own characteristic, which is characteristic zero, which is a little surprising. Um, so how do we prove this? Uh, so the first thing we do is we give a generic uh, divide and conquer algorithm for finding a falsified equation in a system of linear equations over a finite field, uh, given some assignment to it. Um, then we show that you can implement this uh, divide and conquer algorithm in stabbing planes. Um, and stabbing planes is a very like divide and conquer style proof system. So you should, you should think this is the kind of the right direction to go. And finally, we use our translation of face like stabbing planes into cutting planes. Okay. Um, yeah, so in the last bit of the talk, I wanna talk about a surprising feature of the cutting planes proofs of systems of linear equations of the finite fields that we get from this. And this includes the the Seiten formulas of, uh, or the proofs of the Seiten formulas given by Dedouche and Tuari. So these proofs have quasi polynomial size, but also quasi polynomial depth in, in cutting planes. Um, so this is quite striking because every CNF formula has a cutting planes proof of linear depth. Now it may have exponential size but like the worst case upper bound on depth is linear. Um, so this motivates uh, a natural conjecture, which is that there exists a formula which yields a supercritical size depth trade-off for cutting points. That is a formula for which any small proof must have depth which goes beyond worst case. So uh, like we're seeing here for the Seiten formulas. And the Seiten formulas are a natural candidate for this. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, we don't resolve this conjecture in this paper, um, but we do make some, what we believe is progress towards it. So current lower bound techniques um, for proving depth lower bounds uh, for cutting planes appear unable to prove supercritical lower bounds. Um, so the two techniques are basically reduction to communication complexity, which is like has an inherent uh, an inherent upper bound of n, and reductions to lower bounds on the Vital rank of a polytope, which also has an inherent linear upper bound, at least for CNF formulas. Yeah. Um, so this means we kind of need a better understanding of cutting planes depth. And the final contribution of our paper is a new geometric technique for proving cutting planes lower bounds. Um, basically what we do is, is we give a characterization um, of the points which exist within a half space, given the two half spaces from which it was derived. Uh, or, or we show that you know, if, if certain points belong to these half spaces, then they, then, then similar points belong to this, this derived half space. Um, and this is inspired by the protection lemma technique of Burrish Oppenheim et al. from 2003. Um, and it's also applicable not only to cutting planes, but to semantic cutting planes. So that is cutting planes operating with the stronger semantic deduction rule. 
Um, so this allows you to do, right? So previously we had the division rule and the conic combination rule. Semantic deduction just allows any sound inference. So we're allowed to take two previously derived inequalities and derive any new inequality so long as it's sound, so long as every integer point which satisfied the two, the two initial inequalities satisfies the derived inequality. Um, so this is a much stronger proof system. Uh, for example, it, uh, it's known not to be uh, polynomially verifiable unless p is equal to np, and there are exponential separations between um, semantic cutting planes and cutting planes. This was proved by Filmus, Rubesh, and Loria. Um, okay, so yes, yeah, so we developed this new geometric technique for proving cutting planes lower bounds. And using this, we're able to establish a lifting theorem, which lifts resolution depth, or you should think of this as tree-like, or I mean the decision tree depth, to semantic cutting planes depth. Um, and we lift via composition with a four bit XOR. So given a CNF formula, um, obtain a new CNF formula, F composed with four bit XOR by replacing each variable by the parity of four new variables. Okay, and then just rewriting this CNF formula, I mean, rewriting this formula as a CNF formula. Okay, and so our lifting theorem is as follows. It states that for any CNF formula, the depth, the semantic cutting planes depth of refuting the formula composed with the four-bit XOR is at least the resolution depth or the decision tree depth of refuting or proving um, the formula just divided by two. And then using the techniques that we use to prove this lifting theorem, we're also able to establish the first linear lower bound on the Seiten formulas for semantic cutting planes. All right. Um, yeah, so that's a um, brief overview of what's in our paper. I'd like to end with a couple of open problems. So on the right here, I have um, the hierarchy of uh, proof systems uh, that were considered here. So here we have stabbing plane star, cutting planes, stabbing planes. Um, we also have RCP, which you should think of as the dag-like version of stabbing planes. So stabbing planes is a tree. You can make a dag-like version of it. We also have cutting plane star, which is cutting planes with quasi-polynomially bounded coefficients. So the first question is, can cutting planes quasi-polynomially simulate stabbing planes? Um, so that is, can we remove the star from stabbing planes? Um, the next one is, can cutting plane star quasi-polynomially simulate stabbing plane star? So our proof of the simulation causes an annoying blow up in the size of the coefficients. Can we get rid of that? Um, can stabbing planes or cutting planes simulate dag-like stabbing planes? This is the RCP proof system introduced by Krychek. So cutting planes cannot polynomially simulate RCP. Um, this is a result by Atzeria, Spinet, and Esteban from 2002. Uh, they basically show that um, RCP has uh, short proofs of the clique coloring formula for certain parameters of cliques and colorings. Um, and final question is, can tree-like cutting planes refute the Seiten formulas or systems of linear equations over finite fields? All right, um, so thanks for coming to my talk.